Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli, the computer guy here for The Daily Blob, where I shake my brain and nipples every day to get some of that dirty, dirty YouTube money so I can afford to provide you folks in-person hands-on technology education that empowers you to do what it was you want to do in uh, Durham, North Carolina. Silicon Dojo, silicondojo.com. We have a class coming up on AI and SQL in a couple of days, AI and web scraping on November 19th, AI at the Edge with Raspberry Pis coming up uh, shortly, and also AI with REST APIs. If you're interested, take a look at silicondojo.com. Do remember, free the end user is not free. That's why I shake my brain nip nips every day. If you'd like to help me with what I'm doing, there's a donor box link down below. And with that, let's get into this story. This is, you know, when I first saw this story, I was like, okay, that's interesting. That's just a like normal, interesting business thing. But then, but then I just, I just did a video talking about how uh, uh, Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, literally is stating that the GPUs that he's buying for Microsoft are collecting dust. He literally has GPUs that he cannot slot into systems. The bottleneck is no longer the GPUs, it's the systems, it's the electricities, it's the, the data centers and all that kind of stuff, right? So I just talked about that. And so what becomes interesting here is we're, we're already seeing the compute glut. Again, the CEO, this isn't, this isn't some random person. It's not like I went to the bar yesterday and there's some managed service provider who's like, oh, we got too many GPUs. This is, this is the CEO of Microsoft off saying that we're in a, uh, a compute glut. And what becomes very interesting then is that the demand for GPUs uh, seems to just simply be increasing, right? There's more and more demand at the exact same time. It seems like the GPUs that are already being produced uh, don't have anywhere to actually be slotted to go into use. And that's where we get to the question of, you know, what's, what's going on with this whole AI economy, right? As you look at NVIDIA, NVIDIA is handing OpenAI $100 billion so that OpenAI can purchase NVIDIA equipment. One of the things that never really gets discussed is, is that equipment being deployed? Is that equipment actually being deployed? Right, NVIDIA is putting investment money and loans and other things into other companies so that they can buy NVIDIA equipment. Right, that that's boosting uh, NVIDIA sales. But one of the things that gets skipped, and I was surprised until I really started thinking about it after I did that particular uh, piece, is yeah, nobody's really actually talking about the actual deployments. We talk about the data centers being built. We talk about the nuclear plants coming online. Other than XAI, XAI will say they talk about it, but for a lot of these other things, we don't actually hear about the, fi the finished data centers basically going into use. And so that becomes even more interesting now uh, because apparently TSMC uh, is, is at their limit. They are, they are literally producing at 100% capacity. And so since they're producing 100% capacity, TSMC estimated to raise advanced chip prices by up to 10% driven by, quote, gigantic demand from mobile and H HPC customers, high performance computing. Basically, that is the AI space. So there is so much demand for AI hardware, driving the value of NVIDIA up, TSMC is working at 100%, ergo, they're going to increase their prices by 10%. But, I mean, do we have dark GPUs? I talk about that with dark fiber. Dark fiber was fiber that was laid during the dot-com boom and then never got lit up, basically never got networking equipment put at either side. Are we getting to the age of dark GPUs? And then, again, what, what is this going to do with the overall business environment when when it collapses. Um, it's curious, right? So TSMC's cutting edge chip processes, processes are expected to become more expensive moving forward as the firm is factoring in a price hike for mainstream nodes. The demand for semiconductors worldwide is at its peak right now, driven by the AI frenzy and of course the consumer upgrade cycle within the mobile industry. In the midst of this, TSMC is getting the spotlight when it comes to fulfilling chip demand as the Ta Taiwan giant has reported 100% utilization of all its advanced chip processes, including three nanometer and five nanometer, According to a report by the Taiwan Economy Daily, TSMC has already begun negotiating chip supply contracts with its clients and estimates suggest that the chip prices could rise by up to 10% next year. So this is also going to be interesting, again, from the consumer level. I talked about this with the AI boom, uh, where DRAM prices, DRAM prices are up by 50% or more. Again, when you think about these data centers, you think about the GPUs, you think about that kind of thing, you don't think about the RAM, 
you know, they just need good old fashioned RAM to run the servers. Uh, and apparently these AI data centers need so much RAM uh, that it's sucking up, it's sucking up all the supplies of RAM. Apparently um, uh, original um, o OEMs, original equipment manufacturers, the people that build things like uh, computers, many of them are only getting 70% of the supply of RAM that they order. Imagine ordering, like imagine you're an OEM, right? You, you assemble computers, you make your order for RAM, and you only get 70% of it. And the 70% that you to get, do get is 50% higher, right? That is, that is the world that we're in now. And so an interesting thing to be thinking about with this too, is since TSMC is running at 100%, if they increase their prices by 10%, then that means your computer prices next year are also going to go up by 10%. So it's gonna be 10% for the uh, the CPUs and the GPUs, and it's gonna be 50% for the for the RAM, and it's gonna be whatever fucking percent for the tariffs. Um, good old fashioned computers and servers uh, might be getting a lot more expensive. TSMC has typically been discreet when uh, commenting, commenting on pri uh, price hike rumors, mainly because the firm respects its long-term partnerships with clients, which means that price hikes for individual nodes have been, uh, haven't been overly aggressive over the years. However, moving into 2026, TSMC faces a massive production bottleneck of its advanced chip processes, mainly because HPC customers are accounting for a larger portion of the company's orders, which traditionally has been dominated by the mobile segment. The other interesting thing to be thinking about too with this is, uh, you know, China, we talk about this with the, the Western, the Western tech stack and the Chinese tech stack. One of the interesting things to consider here is, as we do all of our stupidity trying to trying to wall off uh, wall off China's tech stack, if the, if they can actually ship hardware, one of the things you have to think about, right? If you're a CIO, a CTO in Argentina or in Brazil or in Germany, right, and you need servers, you need servers, you need computers, right? There's options. There's options in the world. Right, you're like, eh. well, if the only place you can buy equipment from is from one one supplier, at the end of the day, you're gonna buy from that supplier. So it's also kind of curious to think about how this may skew, again, that whole tech war that's going on between the US and, the, and China. More importantly, TSMC is investing heavily in overseas facilities, such as those in the US and Japan, which has resulted in a dramatic rise in expenditure over the years. Fortunately for the ta uh, Taiwan giant, the competition in the semiconductor uh, segment isn't aggressive, which means that uh, under price negotiations, TSMC has leverage over its customers. However, the firm is known for its respectable relationships, which is why even a 10% price rise is seen as a modest one so uh so yeah ai ai is eating all the ram ai is eating all the processors ai is eating all the electricity ai is eating all the water ai is basically eating the world <laughs> and for that we get some pretty adequate memes i mean come on come on isn't isn't a a glut of adequate memes worth <laughs> our entire civilization i think it is so, uh, so yeah, I don't know. It'll be, it'll be curious to see how this goes. And again, th that they're they're running at a hundred percent. So basically, they're running at a hundred percent, which means other companies uh, are trying to keep up. Other companies are trying to compete. Again, Intel with their fads, right? You have Trump administration investing in Intel. Uh, you have these other people producing A6 chips, the whole nine yards. And so, one of the other questions too, which will be interesting, is when the bubble pops, how what what will that look like? Because companies get used to, they get used to their, their, their price points, right? Once you start increasing your price point, companies and people get used to that price point, even when demand plummets again. And so I'll be curious to see how all of that kind of flushes out at the end of the day. So what do you think about this? What do you think about TSMC uh, increasing their prices by 10% uh, next year because they're at 100% capacity? Does that make you feel a little bit uncomfortable thinking that they're at 100% capacity? Like they run hard, they run hard, they run fast, and they're at 100% capacity. Does that, does that seem reasonable to you? I don't know, put your thoughts, put your thoughts down below. If you like these videos, give us a thumbs up. If you hate these videos, give us a thumbs down. Call me amazing, call me a dumbass. Just be a real Lutnik and put a strong American comment down below. None of those, none of those muckraw 
weak comments are acceptable on an American YouTube channel. Anyways, uh, what I actually care about is Silicon Dojo, SiliconDojo.com, free to use your hands-on technology education that empowers you to do whatever the hell it is that you want to do uh, in Durham, North Carolina. If you want to come, you can go to SiliconDojo.com, see what the schedule is, sign up. Do remember, free to the end user is not actually free. Uh, that's why I shake my brain nipples every day. If you want to throw some money into the donor box link down below, that would be ever so lovely. And with that, see y'all later.